This is Echo India 2 Kilo. Charlie, just um, making a little video about Logger32. I've recently changed computer and I am moving from Logic 8 to Logger32. Or I have moved, actually. Um, now, it took me a number of days to sort of get fully up and running with Logger32. Logger uh, in the beginning, I wasn't sure about it. And now that I've been using it, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. It's it's an excellent program, uh, packed with features. Uh, there's two things that I just want to show you, because they confused me initially, and I had to get help with them. Um, one of them is, you know, how to connect uh, to the cluster to get your DX bots coming up here. Uh, the other is, you know, initially your logbook page is maybe not the way you want it. And I've actually rearranged it to look uh, pretty much the way I had my logbook set up in um, in uh, Logic 8. So we'll um, we'll show you the cluster one first. Um, in this tab, um, you know, there's cluster telnet messages, AGWP localhost. If you click on the telnet tab left click as your main mouse button and you go in here and just right click you can connect to k4uga there's also a connect list you can set up um you can set up other connections there but just for the purpose of this demonstration we'll connect to k4uga so just click that one and it asks you for login and you just type your call sign ei2kc and immediately it should give you a response that you're connected first cluster spot has appeared Romeo Victor zero Charlie golf and it also appears in your cluster window now these are all color coded um, and this is an excellent uh, idea because it shows you what you need or if, if, if there's a red background on any of your spots that means it's an all-time new one that you haven't worked it before if there's a blue background it means it's a new band and if it's yellow it means it's a new mode so I see five hotel there and according to this um, it would be a new mode for me uh, and yet I have 17 SSB according to this um, but maybe it's just that I need to get it confirmed Anyway, um, that's the cluster connection. As you can see, it's populated there with spots. On the logbook page, I have sort of rearranged this slightly just for the purpose of this demonstration. Um, what I want to do is put my put the, the call sign of the DX station that I've worked. You see that here. Well, I want that here in the second column. I want the date first and then the call. I moved that just for the purpose of this. I, I normally have it here. So what you do is... In any of those cells you can right click and go setup and go grid layout and you see this apparently complex looking <laughs> uh, window appears with all of the uh, all of the different um, uh, column headers uh, available now if you look here um, so you have QSO date prefix DXCC time on frequency band mode etc etc and the call is way down here what you need to do is to move one you need to click on the arrow and drag click and drag so keep keep the mouse button clicked but what you need I'm not just not going to do it just yet because what you need to do is drag it up to where you want it to go and hit it onto the square where you want it to go so we currently have prefix in the second column I want it to go there so I'm gonna have to drag it up to this square to get it to sit in under QSO date and above prefix so this here we go we're going to do it now click call drag sorry click uh, oh now see we've made a mistake there because we dragged it onto one of the other squares so I want to make sure we drag it onto the right square this time and now it's in the second uh, it's the second column so if we apply that you'll see now that the call sign of the DX station is now in the second column and that's how you basically rearrange all these uh, you may want I mean if you're an iota chaser for instance and that's your primary interest you may want iota over here somewhere uh, early on um, it's kind of important uh, for me that I have the call sign 
uh, information. Um, you may want to put your, maybe you don't take comments with your queue, so as I do, maybe you may want to make that bigger. In that case, all you need to do is you can resize the, the column headers here. Um, it is all very um, customizable. Uh, another thing that I liked is, uh, for instance, Fox, Fox Whiskey 5 Juliet Juliet is in blue, meaning I need that on a new band. I've only one QSO with Fox Whiskey, so I click on that, my radio goes to the right frequency. Uh, not hearing him, I wasn't hearing him there when I checked. But um, if you click on this window, Fox Whiskey, it'll show you all of the QSOs you've had with Fox Whiskey in a new window, which is very handy. Of course, there is a window showing previous QSOs with a particular call sign that you've worked before. So say for instance, um, let's just take um, Victor Papa 8 Lima Papa, let's say Bob in the Falklands. Well, automatically this window uh, fills up with information about previous QSOs with Bob and uh, a number of those are confirmed. So that's uh, Logger32 uh, so far. If I discover anything else that's uh, kind of easy to fix, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll let you know. This is the I2KC.